you. Welcome to the three ions of design as a part of our first ever Midwest Design Week. Um, my name is Ashton Stan, and I volunteer as co-vice president with AIJ Cincinnati, one of the 70 plus chapters of AIGA, the Professional Association for Design. This week, we have a really, um, we have a really big uh, list of uh, exciting events um, that focus on our theme of culture and its many forms. Um, including some uh, great events that have already happened today, but as, as well as creating culture across creative communities with Jacinda Walker and our keynote um, happening on Friday night, Design for Liberation um, by Teresa Moses. All information um, for all of our events can be found at MidwestDesignWeek.com. Um, this event would not have been possible without the support of, our, um, of all of our sponsors, um, but especially our event sponsor this year, Old Speak. Um, thank you to Alan Pieper for your dedication and providing the best for our design community. And thank you to all of our sponsors of Midwest Design Week this year. Um, now I'm going to pass it over to Alan to share a few words. You good? Yep. Cool. Hey, everybody. My name is Alan, and I run a creative technology studio in Indianapolis called Old Speed. Uh, we're a team of design-focused engineers who partner with creative agencies, studios, and other in-house design teams to create apps and websites that are fast, useful, and delightful. We really wanted to sponsor Midwest Design Week because we're big champions of the Midwest creative scene. We believe our scene is world-class, and it's a big part of our mission to amplify that. Uh, we want to extend a deep appreciation for these local AIGA chapters for organizing this event bringing our communities together and strengthening them. We want to thank each of you in attendance. It's pretty cool that on a random Monday, 7 p.m., designers from all over the Midwest and elsewhere are coming together to share ideas about how to use design for good. The late Milton Glaser said that good design is good citizenship. So good on each of you for being here and accepting the social responsibility that comes <clears throat> with, uh, with practicing our craft. I'd really like to connect with any of you who are interested in design and tech and how those two overlap to help shape our society. You can hit me up on LinkedIn via our website, oldspeak.io. Uh, again, my name is Alan. I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference. Peace. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. All right, and now without further ado, um, I'd like to welcome our uh, featured speaker for this evening, um, Mike Nichols. Um, who is the creative director and founder of Umber. Thank you, thank you. Um, super, super excited to be here. Uh, Ashton, thank you for reaching out to me. Um, and all of the, uh, the chapters from, from Cincinnati, from Indianapolis and Toledo and Louisville, um, super, you know, just ecstatic to be here. I mean, it's, you know, it's real time. And so I'm glad to, to, to be here with you guys having real talk. And so, I'm going to share my screen so we can get into the three ions of design. Um, hopefully everybody can see this. Um, if someone can give me a thumbs up, if they can see it, great, awesome. Um, so here we are. Uh, happy Monday, everybody. Um, who, what, where, how, and why? Okay, who? I am a dad, a visual artist, a designer, a creative director, and a publisher. Um, what? I have a design, I have a design practice where I provide clients with creative uh, solutions and also publish um, a lot of print media under Umber. Where? I am based out of Oakland, California. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Charlotte, and lived in various places in between. Um, uh, how? <laughs> so the work that I do, I do a lot of, a lot of passion as the talk, um, a lot of guts, a little naivete, you know, sometimes I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I know I have to do it and a little bit of strategy. Um, and so why am I doing this? So this is my purpose. This is why I'm here on this earth to create, to design, to illustrate. Um, it's just, is is you know, as much as Umber, and, and, and designing is a part of um, my job as a, as a creative, like it's, it's about legacy as well. Cause my dad also was, was a visual artist. And so just, you know, it's, it just, I just have to do this. I, I, I have no other choice. The three ions of purpose driven design. So like I said in the, um, 
uh, the description, this is not about science. The ions I'm talking about are the ions in passion, vision, and mission. Passion is something that you get lost in this beauty, right? It's just something where you just, you can't think of anything else but that and you want to be a part of that. Vision. Vision, for me at least, is applying that passion into something that is tangible, something you can touch, something you can hold. Um, and mission is giving your vision a sense of purpose, taking steps for it to have impact. I mean, if you really think about it, passion is sort of passive. You're just being who you are. You're being authentic. Um, vision is using your using some imagination. Um, and mission is, you know, is going to work. <laughs> That's basically what a mission is, going to work. Um, so this is this is a case study, right? This is and it's personal. Um, when you really are thinking about designing with, with purpose, you know, it's a personal journey. It's not about it's not about your company. It's not about your client. It's not about um, the place you work for. It's about you. It's a personal journey to really have this experience of, of designing with purpose. Um, so uh, before I get any further, I'm going to sh share with you a little video of. How I make umber in this in this video in particular is about the making of our last of our issue last year our sound issue. Also check it out. I want to disrupt with a black and brown magazine that's printed in black and brown ink in Silicon Valley, right? I want to disrupt with that. I want you to see this beautiful magazine, beautiful stories, perspectives, narratives, and realize, oh, holy shit, everybody in here is black and brown. One of my visions for Umber is that you go into a magazine store and you see Umber, like, whoa. And then you see you inside of Umber. What I want to say is I am here. My perspective, my viewpoint matters. What I really want to do is give a platform to black or brown people who just look at the world differently and engage with it differently. The best way to do that, the best way to archive our stories, our narratives is through print. Because it's a journal, it's a, the creative thing is a graphic journal. Pencil and a piece of paper, that's where it all starts. where I want to make something really that is really tangible, really something you can hold. And you feel the paper, you feel the texture of the paper and everything else. It makes it like, okay, I need to cherish this. For some people it's nostalgia. But then there's a wholeness of like talking about things that inspire and things that make you feel like, wow, like, you know, I have a center now. Every issue is a theme, right? The themes are really things that I'm inspired by, things that I would like to see in a magazine, but once again, come at it from a very nuanced perspective. There should be a narrative that runs through. Visually, context-wise, perspective-wise, you should see like, oh, 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 that at the end you have a conclusion. Knowing that our content and our perspective is relevant, is so relevant and so needed. Doing the press check. Essentially, when they when they print the magazine, they print it out in these big form sheets, and then I have to proof it and make sure it looks right. Oh, this is fine, right? This is good. That's good. That's good. Umber is really independent. I still feel like Umber's perspective and viewpoint and content, you know what I'm saying, is right from the source of the people. How I want to engage in the world is through energy. You read Umber, you can get in either, either of the space. You can get in the space, wow, I, love, I just love seeing black and brown people represented in printed media, just in media in general. Wow, like really cool, artistic, creative shit. You know what I'm saying? Like those are the, that's where it, Umber is right there. Created in Oakland, printed in Oakland.
Yay. <laughs> so I kind of got ahead of myself by sh showing you Umber, but I really want to give you some context for how, now I'm going to talk about how I got there, right? Um, passion. Passionately usually starts at a young age. I mean, if you really think about it, what was the earliest moments you had as a young person and when you really was excited about something, where you obsess over that thing to where you want to, to where you want it to be a part of you, you want to learn about it. A lot of times it really starts really, really early. Um, this is where it started for me. Um, highlights for children. So this book my mom ordered, and back then highlights for children was a hardcover book. And it had all the things I loved. I mean, I just, it's fun to look at the title, fun with a purpose, right? You know what I'm saying? And so when I had this mag, when I had this magazine or this book hardcover magazine, I would try to, to apply all of the, the, the art projects, the little, the questions, the puzzle pieces, everything of it, right? So this really started the, the passion of, of print media. And then as I got a little older, it was about, it was about motorcycles, like every kid, loves motorcycles, right? I mean, well, at least I did. And so um, I would literally draw every single, every single motorcycle that was inside of the magazine because I wanted to, once again, to be a part of the world of, of cycle world. Um, as I got a little older, um, you know, hip hop became a, a huge passion, <laughs> excuse me, for me. And so I remember I was, I gotta be 16, 17, and this is 1991. I'm dating myself. <laughs> in 1991, I was in this rim shop in Charlotte, my hometown, and I saw this I saw this cover of The Source. So The Source was the magazine for hip hop back then. And this picture of Heavy D, I just remember seeing this. It's like, oh, okay, now the, the thing I love, the thing I'm passionate for has a, a place in, 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 you know, in a magazine. Um, then my senior year in high school, Vibe, came out. So Vibe was, I've never seen anything like it before. It was large format, black and white images. The photography was amazing. It was more artsier than the source. It wasn't the source, it was something different. And I was like, okay, this, I'm liking this. This this makes sense. So in my journey um, in college, first I went to school for illustration, then went back to school for graphic design. Um, my, type, my type design teacher told me about immigrate. So this is, this actually, these issues came out as I was in college, while I was in college. And then I got obsessed by Immigre. Immigre, what I loved about Immigre is that it really made, um, you know, it took the, the focus on design, on, uh, on, on topography and layout. Like it really was, the focus was on that. And I was hooked. I was totally hooked. Um, you know, when you think now, if you think about that, it's, as you're passionate about something, it's, some, it's, it's how you identify with yourself, right? You're proud to say, oh, I'm a designer. Oh, I am a writer. Oh, I like, you're, it's just something that is a part of you. It, be, it becomes a part of, you know, of who you are as a person. And so, um, you know, here's this little business card I did, kind of jumping a little bit back and forth. This is very non-linear, but, you know, I, I want to give you some context of how much when the passion started. So this is in high school. Once again, this is back in 93. This is the first time I heard of electronic mail, email. And in our shop class, Mr. Lacey um, had us, had us. I, I forgot how we did this. We printed this some kind of way, but we had, we had to design our business cards. And this is what I made. So at this point in my life, I knew about the term graphic artist and illustrator. So this is the this is me taking that passion now applying it into a physical thing by like making a business card. Um, you know, and think about passion that you are curious. You want to see how things work, what world they exist in. You really want to understand, you know, what how this thing is made, right? And so then at some point, passion becomes home. You never want to leave. You want to just sit in that passion. You feel excited. You feel exuberant. And also you feel you feel refuge. This is where I, this is where I want to be. So now let's take a moment and really think about what was that time where you were you're passionate about something. What was the earliest moment you had as a young person and you really was excited about this thing? And it doesn't have to be designed, just that thing, right? So, vision. Woo! I love vision. I love vision. I love vision. I love vision. Vision is magic. That's what vision is. Vision is letting your imagination dictate the reality that you want, is letting your dream 
become a reality. Now, once again, you're applying that passion into something that is, you know, it's tangible, right? And so the vision, you have to imagine how it's going to look before it's even existing. And so these are some notes that I created for Umber back in 06, right? So I lived in, in Philadelphia and I was like, what if I made a black version of Immigrate, right? What would that look like? What content would I have? What would it represent? You know, really, I made, I really, you know, I really made Umber as a beacon to see, am I alone out there? Is there any other black or brown people who are inspired by design as much as I am, who are inspired by print, who want to have a really a nuanced approach in, in you know, s s something to be inspired by. Um, if you really think about it, your vision really matches your values, what you stand for. I mean, right now, a lot of companies are out there, you know, they're making the, the claim of what they stand for and um, you know, whether it's Black Lives Matter or social justice, you know, so at this point, your vision really is informed by what your values are, and what you stand for, you know, and so I mean, I've been doing this now for over 20 years. And my idea of leave, I left my job and uh, it, it's been over two years now, and I want to work for clients and do something that I am passionate about and, and that I um, that, that actually has my same values, right. So this is my vision for Umber to globally highlight the creative nuance of black and brown people in printed media. That's it. That's the vision. That's what I want to see. That's how I want people to see me, right? And so um, if you really think about it, you know, black and brown folks or black and brown people, Umber is printed in black and brown ink, but the narratives, the perspectives we're talking about are people who are black folks, indigenous people, and people of color, right? And the creative nuance is how imaginative people engage in the world around them. When you're a designer, when you're creative, you don't just, just read the same as everyone else. You look at things differently, you eat differently, you read different books, you engage with people differently, you, you have, have, have different experiences in your life. And so really, Umber really is that space where creative thinkers can really, can nerd out and be, and be with one another. Um, so this, is, I love vision boards, Lord of mercy. Listen, vision boards, once again, taking that passion and applying it to something tangible. And for me, I'm really passionate about print media. So I have to literally make a physical vision board. This vision board is about three by four feet. It's huge, right? So whichever practice you're in, you can, your vision board could be Instagram. It could be on Pinterest. It could be wherever it is. It could be on Figma, wherever that vision board is. A vision board is really, once again, taking that, that step into making, you know, your, your vision real, your passion real. And so, you know, listen, you got to visualize the outcome. Put it out there in the universe, right? You have to have to visualize where you want to see your, your passion exist in, right? And so one of the things I did when I was working on Umber is I made a prototype of Umber. I had no money at this point. I would literally go to every magazine store and bookshop I would, th I would think of and put a copy of the prototype in the magazine shelves and take a picture of it. Post on Instagram, share it with friends, put it out there in the universe. And so these are actually Umber in, these are real copies of Umber um, in London. And so it was, it was, you know, once again, my vision was to see black and brown people represented the way I see myself represented, but see ourselves in these, these spaces where where all this art and creativity and and journalism exists, I want to see us represented in totality, right? A lot of times, black and brown folks and folks of color, we are represented different media channels, but not in not in this in this fullest form, right? And so um, that's really the vision I had. So now let's once again take a moment, think about that time, or think about the vision you have. For your design right once again you're taking you're applying your passion you're, you're giving your passion context and now you're thinking about okay how can i apply this passion into something that is tangible so take a moment really just think about right what is my vision what do how do i want to see the world differently how, and how do i want the world to see me the mission yeah so the mission this this is when the work comes in right the mission is making your vision sustainable that's it, right? You know, what is the first step you have to take? How, how can I make this, this vision I have real? Do I need to, you know, do I need to do crowdfunding? Do I need to share with friends? Like this is, this is now you're starting to, to take that mission and really try to apply it, right? And I always say, listen, 
small steps, big impact. You know, you have to do a little brand, little, little uh, uh, you know, brand um, showing here of Umber. And so, I mean, this is a great example of that's the one small step for mankind is blah, 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 blah. Right, listen, small steps. If you try to make it too big, right? You'll get to get overwhelmed and now I can't do this. I have a full-time job. I'm a, I'm a parent. I don't, I don't have any time for this. I got to pay bills. Try to really think of your mission in small steps. Those, those, those small steps will be represented in the impact and the impact will be reflective of your passion and your vision and your commitment to that thought, that idea, right? Check it out. You are your first target audience, no one else. Once again, like I said before in the in the beginning, this is a personal journey. It's about you. Then you go from there, right? Really start with yourself first, you know. And and the best way to to do that, wherever is once again, keep it small. Keep that mission small first. And you want to measure the impact. And I'm not talking about data or statistics or all the things. I know a lot of us are we are, are product designers. We do UX, user experience, uh, all of those things. Whatever. Yes, those are those are real, but in this particular case, this is your this is your purpose, right? This is your purpose for design. This is you giving your design purpose, and you have to measure the impact. And so, the impact I'm talking about, how you measure it with, is through your community. Now, this data mattered. <laughs> in 2017, I took the idea of Umber, which I've had since 06. Since 2006, I had this idea and I wanted to see if it, if it has any legs. So started a Kickstarter campaign while I'm a full-time job and we raised over $11,000, right? And this now we're, now we're taking that mission, right? And, and building something that's really important. Something that's really important for your mission is a community, right? Your mission should include, should include your community. Your mission should include your community because a lot of times it's really going to be about you doing it, but your mission should involve the people who, are, who you are a part of, right? Your, your neighbors, your friends, your families, your design peers, include them. This, this is my community. These are my friends. These, these people and more were featured in our first issue of Umber, right? And our first issue was a vulnerability. And so once again, your community matters, right? You know, so your mission should be supported by your community, your mission is to support your community first and then go from there, all right? You know, like I said before, sometimes it's just you. And this is me hunched over my drafting table <laughs> working on Umber, right? And so if you see in behind you, there's the vision board, right? The vision board is there. And then as I have that vision board for inspiration, now I start to actually to, to draw it out and figure out what Umber is gonna be. Listen, this is hard. I'm not going to lie to you. This is hard. This is so hard. I've cried so much. Real talk. I literally was in tears trying to trying to get this thing done, right? But it's worth it. It's so worth it. But check this out. Your passion is worthy of being visualized. Real talk. Your passion is worthy of being visualized. That's a tweet. That's it. Right? Think about that. Like, you know, you are worthy to take your passion, your vision and make it real. Right, you know what I'm saying? Your idea is important, truly important. This is my passion. This is my vision and this is my mission. This is all of the things that was that was created from Umber with the support of, of, of our community, um, writers, contributors, and my joy actually was to making the magazine, was doing the layout, the illustration, some of the photography, some of the writing were really, I have, I have tons of support from contributors and writers and proofreaders to help me make this this vision real, right? And so, you know, to kind of to close this up, your passion is eternal, the vision is ideal, the mission is a living document. Listen, things are shifting all the time, right? And so how do you adapt to the circum to the circumstances of reality, right? But your passion, that really doesn't change. You're always gonna be passionate about that thing. Your vision is the ideal. You're always gonna have that vision for what it's going to be. Right, but your mission has to adapt with the times. So that's really how you have to have to look at it. Um, and so, uh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm sure I'm going to hang out, you know, for um, some Q and A. Um, so definitely, please follow us on Umber Magazine on all the channels on, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, you can buy our graphic journals at at UmberMagazine.net backslash backslash store. 
And if you want to learn more about me, uh, go to thisismikenichols.com. Uh, this is M-I-K-E-N-I-C-H-O-L-L-S dot com. Thank you. There you go. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Mike. Yeah, your work is like incredibly inspiring and to see all the hard work you put into making Umber and turning your vision into reality um, is really, really amazing and truly inspiring to myself and I'm sure to the rest of our audience as well. Thank you, um, thank you. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy we were able to have you on here um, as our opening night speaker, um, being able to bring you in and get everyone a little taste of what's going on all the way over in Oakland, California. So. Yes, yes, indeed. Cool, cool. All right, well, we're going to get um, started with some Q&A. Okay. Um, pulling from what some people are putting in either the live stream or on our Slack channel. Okay. Um, let's see. I can pull the first one. Um, let's see. Um, Stark um, is asking, he's like, in uh, 2020, I've always thought um, how this year will be put into the history books. Mm -hmm. Since Umber captures people's stories in print, do you feel the responsibility to capture these stories happening now? And if so, how do you focus on this in your storytelling? Mm. So that was, it's funny, that came up a lot in working on Umber. So the new issue we just released, actually, you're seeing the first, I got the printer proofs for the new issue. Um, all in this beautiful glory, issue four, um, is on sports, athletics, and movement, right? That idea I had in, uh, that theme I came up with in August of last year. And so, um, and then the pandemic happened, right? And um, so the way that I'm, so here's the thing. I'm fortunate enough that the work that Umber is doing, um, I feel like is always is relevant. And so during this time, I had somebody actually ask me, why are you doing this issue? Why are you doing this theme now when everybody else is talking about everything else? And, you know, for the most part, you know, my vision is, is steadfast in that, in that way. And so the way I adapt to current, current times is I try to have more nuanced conversations, whether it's through social media, programs like this. This is the time where I'll talk about things that are current. But there's a particular way I want, I want, want to archive the, the perspectives of black and brown people. There's a particular way I want to, to, to show our creativity, our beauty, our nuance, and that was never going to really change, right? And so a lot of times in, you know, in, in dealing with the, with, with the times of today, I really rather have a conversation and dialogue around it versus trying to archive it in print media because right now, Umber is really is a is one man show, right? It's just me really who are doing a lot of the work and making it happen. And so, um, and then I leave it, what happens is that the contributors themselves end up talking about the current times. I give them the platform but to talk about what they want to talk about inside of that theme, but they end up addressing a lot of the stuff that's happening in real time. I give them that, that platform in print media. And so once again, there's a particular way I want to archive our stories. And for me, archiving our stories, that is a way that we can highlight us in a way that's more nuanced and not caught up in things constantly shifting and changing. Like you get tired, right? Sometimes you get tired of always like, okay, now I got to talk about this now. Everybody else is tired. Now I got to do, like it's just, sometimes it's, it's just tiring. So. Um, I usually save those times to have comp like have a dialogue now versus versus doing it in print. Hopefully that answers the question. I, mean, I could I could talk. There we go. Um, Vanessa, do you want to go ahead and read another question? Yes. We have a question from Steve, and he says that print design is his passion. How mm. long have you been designing um, Umber for? So um, I started out, so I've always been in the world of print and always in the world of magazines and publishing. Um, I came up with the idea of Umber in 06. So that's four, 14, <laughs> 14 years ago is when I came up with this idea. And so I designed the our, our previous logo 13 years ago, right? And so I've been 
a number has been in my head for a long time. And so six years after coming up with the idea of Umber, in 2012, I made a prototype of Umber. And this prototype, I just made 100 copies, gave to friends and family. Once again, applying that vision, applying that passion, seeing put it into a tangible thing. And so then in 2012 is actually when I made a prototype. And then, you know, then four years later, uh, Trump got an office <laughs> and said, so, all right, it's like, so how am I going to show up in this moment, right? What am I going to do that is authentic to me, my passion, my vision, and take up space, right? So, oh, the idea for Umber, now, now is the time to do it. And so that was probably the only time I really, you know, launched Umber based upon the, with the climate that we're in, but still, I didn't really address him. People are addressing him enough. I'm, he has enough of that, right? And so I said, that idea I have now is the time to make it. So officially, Umber was launched in 2017. Um, and so that was issue one, which is which, which was on on vulnerability, right? So so officially, it's been it's been four years now. We're three and a half years <laughs> going on four. That's awesome. He did also ask if you're looking for interns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Like I I did have interns for this issue and I like it was to be honest with you it was hard to have an intern and still do the work you know what I'm saying because once again I'm and I was doing it, things were happening in real time and so once there's some things I'm announcing you know later on this year whatever where I definitely will need some interns so so be on the lookout for that cool um, let's see, we've got a question from Tess who's asking, do you also have any additional side projects that you work on? Yeah, so my jobby job <laughs> is <laughs> uh, is design work for clients. So that's my my main, the, my bread and butter. Um, I've designed logos, marketing, annual reports. And what happened last year is that, uh, which is, uh, here's, here's something to think about for your passion project, right? Or that pat you're, you're applying your your vision, you're applying your passion to a vision of eventually to a mission, that will become your portfolio, that will become your resume, right? Not you know what I'm saying not like a you know a C, you know not a traditional resume where you have just you know Word document or Google Doc like your project becomes your your resume. I mean excuse me your resume and your portfolio. So what happened is that at the end of last year, people rec people realize oh you did all the graphics, oh you did all the layout. Can you do our, our annual report? Can you do our, uh, our, our logo design? Can you do this, this impact report that we're doing? So eventually that started to really to bubble up, but I left my job in 2018 um, doing, doing my design work for clients. So that's my main, that's my main job is, is design work for clients. But Umber is that, that passion project that's becoming realer and realer and realer to where it'll, you know, it'll grow and, and, and be what it needs to be. All right. I have a two-part question from mm -hmm. Ariane. First part is, when you decided to focus your time and energy fully on Umber, what place were you at? <laughs> I was broke. <laughs> I was broke. Um, but I kind of what I said in the speech before is that, or in the talk, is that, you know, the no, no, I'm not taking any shots the company I work for, but it didn't, the company didn't represent my values. Um, and even not just my value, just as a designer, but just as a as a as a black man, as a person of color, right in the Bay Area, it didn't reflect the it didn't reflect how I wanted to change and impact the world. And so I just was done. I was like, you know what? I'll leave my job, and I don't think I'm going to work for anybody else. Um, so I was broke, and but I had a little bit of cushion. That cushion got you know that cushion became a feather, <laughs> and so I started taking those feathers and flapping with them to see if I can keep going. Um, and so really to say that I was just tired. I was tired of, of, of giving up my energy for, for companies that didn't, that didn't represent me or care about me. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. And I think I'm talented enough to where I can get some client work that, that, that more reflects my values as a person. And so, um, but it was, listen, it was scary. Um, it was, uh, 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 uh emotional, um, it was liberating, it was freeing, 
all of those things, like all range of emotions was there. And all range of emotions was a level 10, right? And so, yeah, that's that was it. I had to do it. I had no other choice. I really, really, I just, you yeah, know, I can't do this no more. And so. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The second part of that question is, was it just an idea that you had built from scratch at that point? Or had you been working on it as a passion project on the site? side and felt you got it to a point where you could push it into full fruition. Yeah. I mean, what, I mean, the, pa the passion project of it was when I made, made a prototype in 2012. That was when, let me just make it right. Life happens. Like I said, I'm a dad. My son is nine now. Um, he was young. And so I was definitely was in that, in that space, whatever. And so then, um, but what happened, like I said, when I launched our Kickstarter campaign, I was working on a full-time job, right? So working full-time job, being a dad, drawing and illustrating this magazine from, from scratch because there was umber there's nothing like umber right umber definitely we stand on the shoulders of magazines like immigre vibe ray gun communication arts ebony essence you know all of these beautiful magazines right but what i what i had a vision for umber for i didn't, I didn't see yet so in a sense it started from scratch in terms of like the making of it but um, but really, you know, it was just like, you know, it just had to happen. And so, um, um, yeah, so, so that, so it just built up. And then once I did a Kickstarter campaign, while I'm a full-time job, I raised the money. I'm like, you know what? I don't know, man. I think I'm going to do another one. Right. So now how, how can I take this passion project and make it more like tangible and Kickstarter campaign was me doing a, a, um, a proof of concept, right? Here's, you know, here's a concept. The proof is I raised the money, got the funding to get it printed. Now what's next? The next question we've got is uh, from Dominique. Um, mm -hmm. She's asking, um, she says, representation for people of color, especially women, is very important to me. How does Umber feature slash or speak to women? Um, how do you reflect this in your team structure for an issue or, and do you have any plans to grow in this aspect? Yeah. So our new cover has a beautiful black woman on the cover, right? And um, it's, I'm gonna be honest with you about that. So when I created Umber, I wanted to make a dope printed publication that happened to have black and brown people on there. The, the push wasn't to say, oh, black and brown representation, that was not it. Because I feel like with some of these media companies, you know, they put on people who are who are part of their their community, their network, right? I don't think I don't think they're trying to make a white magazine. They're just doing, oh, this is what we like, and this is my people, and we, this is who we're going to hire. And so, like I said in the talk, is that I brought up, I put on my friends in the magazine, like, oh, you're dope, you're dope, you're dope. You want to be a part of this magazine? And so, and just in my particular situations. I grew up in a single parent household, my mom. And so I've, women you are the, who I tend to make friends with the most, right? The most intimate, convers not relationship wise in terms of dating, but just like homies are, there are women. And so it didn't take a stress for me to try to make sure, oh, I got to make sure I include women because that's what I, that's, that's what I rock with, right? So that's what I'm a part of. That's the community I'm a part of. And so um, it was less about, it was less about, oh, let me try to, let me try to fill this void is more about, oh, you're the homie. Let me put, I want to hire, I want to feature you in, in the magazine. And so, and it's so interesting about that is that, and what, I, this was not even intentional, I'm straight up. We have three different covers for our Sam issue. The sports cover has a woman, Latina woman. The, the athletic cover has a black woman on the cover and, <laughs> The movement issue cover has a black woman on the cover, right? And a Native American, you know what I'm saying? And so for me, it was important for me to have, have representation of uh, Native Americans as well. And so once again, people act like these folks are out there, they are they're there, right? It's who's a part of your community, right? And so, um, and the readership for Umbra is actually 60% is, is women and 40% men. And so, once again, I wasn't trying to make sure I put them in there, but it just happened to be to where most of the writers are women in the magazine. It wasn't like I was trying to do that, but that's just, once again, 
my community, who I'm, who I rock with, who I get support from, who I, who I'm inspired by. And so that's just kind of how it happened. It was really organic. Got a question from John. He says, mm -hmm. you mentioned magazine shops. In Cincinnati, I don't know many physical stores that sell magazines. Do you have any recommendations for online stores or places to buy physical issues of magazines? Yeah, so I, so, you know, that's with the pandemic, you know, most of my sales now is online, you know, are online. And so people go to the website, order it, excuse me, and then they, um, that ship it to them. Literally, I pack it up myself and I ship it to them. And so a lot of places where right now, like I'm not, there used to be, there's one company called Mag, no, no, let me get it right. Stack Magazines. Stack Magazines is based out of London and they actually ship you different publications from around the world. So it's almost like a, they, they curate it for you. They decide, you know, there's a, there's a group of magazines that, that they want to sell and they do that. And now I'm thinking, shoot, there should be one for black and brown folks, right? All of the, all the publications for us. And so, but those are the places that I know. And then if you go to any, there's one great um, place called, one great magazine called Crown Mag, which is, um, is, a, is a, a, a magazine that's focused on, on black women with natural hair and just super, like the, the people who run it are just incredible print magazine, but they're definitely in the vein of, 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 of Essence and Ebony, but really just, you know, just incredible magazine. And so a lot of times you have to really have to search and find these places, you know, you have to kind of do your homework, right? You know what I'm saying? But those are the ones that are top of mind where you can kind of, you know, go online and buy them. And so, I mean, some, some, you know, it's funny, Umber is sold at, at Moad, which is the Museum of African, Af African Diaspora in San Francisco. And they have an online store where you can buy uh, books, publications, magazines, art books, graphic journals like Umber. And so, but usually, if you, even if you go to the websites for, for galleries and museums, they will have, a, have an online store there. Awesome. Yeah, I've heard lots of really great things about Crown Magazine. I feel like uh, uh, Facebook doing the targeting once you're researching. When I was do researching Umber, <laughs> I started getting ads for Crown Magazine too. <laughs> See, I need, I need to do that. I need to, I need to figure that out. Um, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> we heard you talking about Umber. Let's show you a bunch of ads for it. Yeah, so we got to get yeah. you hooked up on that so you can... <laughs> You can start Facebook creeping and everybody and everyone can know about Umber. Um, <laughs> all right, so we've got another couple of questions here. Um, yeah. These next two are kind of similar, so I'm gonna kind of merge them together. Um, yeah. They're from Ashley and Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, so Ashley asked what's next for Umber and, um, and Sydney asked, um, how, do you, um, how do you see you keeping your vision going moving forward? Um, so what's next and how do you see it moving forward? Yeah, so I wasn't gonna tell people this yet. I wasn't gonna tell people this yet. Fuck it. Um, so I really want to push Umber beyond just the graphic journal. Um, so you know, outside of the graphic journal, I've shown you with the with the Sam issue, our sports athletic um, movement issue. We also do our, our zines, which are um, a smaller format, not necessarily in size, but in in the amount of pages. And so those things are more like free form, no themes. Every issue of Armor has a theme. These are more just kind of just like, you know, just, just like free form thoughts and ideas and, and, and creatives. Um, I want to make Umber a publishing company. That is what I want to do. And then, you know, at some point start, start to publish other people's stuff, you know what I'm saying as well. And so, but, and then the, the vision, the, the flagship experience of it will be what you get from the graphic journal. <laughs> this, this will determine, you know, the type of content that we want to publish, right? And so um, with that, there's, I want to um, produce another, another, an, another printed publication next year. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to say that yet. I'm going to keep that to myself, but um, that will, that will come out next year. And then the first of uh, January, we're going to do a big push, um, probably crowdfunding again to give people a heads up. Um, to launch Umber as a publishing company. I mean, that's that's the vision, right? And so I've been reading a lot on John H. Johnson, who is the founder and the creator of Ebony um, Johnson, Johnson Publication. Just reading his 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 autobiography, his story, 
And I think it, you know, it just, it's time. I feel like, um, like I said, Umber is unique. I don't, I haven't seen anything like it before, right? And I'm not even saying it because I make it, like I'm saying it because I did the research and I couldn't find it, right? And so, oh, let me make it because nobody else is doing it. And so, um, and I think there's a, there's a community of black and, black and brown folks who are creative and nuanced that need their, their, what their story told in, within the lens of black and brown people versus other people highlighting them. I think, you know, really there's a, there's a, there's a way that we can do it um, differently that can, can, can show the complexities and, and the nuance of, uh, of folks of color. So, so that's the vision. The vision is um, next year um, to launch a new, uh, um, new printed magazine, um, launch Umbra as a publishing company, and then probably, you know, in two years, two or three years, start to publish other people's stuff. Well, that's exciting. Can't wait to see where that goes. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. We got the inside scoop over here. Yeah. 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 I, you know, scoop. it's been, you know, it, it, sometimes you got to just put out a universe. I said it before. You have to visualize the outcome, right? You know, I'm visualizing the outcome for Umber to be a publishing company. I mean, that's the, that's the, th th that's how you grow, right? You know what I'm saying? The, the small stuff was just to make a zine, but just to make a, you know, one issue, and then now, 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 where can it go, right? And so, um, so definitely, we'll be, you know, trying to bring in more folks in the fold to help help me out with this this big initiative. Because really, at this point, it's about black publishing, right? You know, what I'm saying is is you know is it's about f folks of color having having a space in printed media, and for Umber will always be in print. I mean, that's just the vision for it. But there will be more online content to support some of the things you can't do in a print magazine. Right, but the flagship experience experience is holding this bad boy in your hand and touching the paper. I mean, that's this is what it's all about, you know. And so, so yeah. Well, we can't wait for that to happen. You spoke it into the universe, so it's gonna happen. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our next question is from Ariane, and she mm -hmm. says, "How do you recommend expanding your community to include creatives from different backgrounds?" Have you found a great place to connect with other creatives? So, like I said, with Umber, Umber was like a beacon, or is there anybody else there out there like me, right? And so you kind of have to create your world and invite people to come, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like find people who align in your values, whether they're creative, whether they're designers, um, in tech or whatever, and sort of like go kind of like a ripple effect. Like you have to, you, you throw the, the rock in the pond and see all the ripples, you know, expand from it, right? And so um, in finding that you almost have to kind of do research, really look and see what things, what, what, what things resonate for you. I'm a recluse by nature. That's just kind of what I am. And um, Umber was really, most times what people do, what they normally do is they build an audience, then they release the product, right? I wanted the, the, the flagship experience of Armour to be with printed media. So I made the magazine, then I built the audience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so sometimes you have to make it. What's that movie, the old school movie, uh, the baseball movie, make it and they will come or something like that. Um, you have to make it and then, then folks will come. Right, you know what I'm saying? Once you make it, you have to put yourself out there and meet people and show up in any spaces. So you kind of have to create it yourself. I mean, it's great to have a partner what to do it with you that that have some of the the some of the skill sets you don't have. Um, but really you have to go out there and, and meet people with the product in hand. Say, hey, hey, check this out. What do you think? Right. And then they they will tell you what they think, right? You know what I'm saying? And so that's really, you know. You, almost, you have to make it yourself to put yourself out there and, and let people see it. The next uh, question we've got um, is uh, Grace is asking, uh, where do you print your magazine? And also side note, the news of, uh, of Umber uh, putting out their own zine seems also really exciting to a lot of people. So you got to keep us up to date on that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, well, I mean, we essentially Umber, we are doing our own zine essentially, right? I mean, every everything that Umber puts out was made here in the studio, right? You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's really the uh, oh, answer the question. Ask the question one more time. I just lost it. 
Okay, no, you're fine. I sorry, I told you the side note thing. I should have waited till you're done first. <laughs> um, the the question from Grace was, where do you print um, Umber magazine? Yes. So our first three issues, three or th first three issues, and um, our um, our zines were actually printed here in Oakland. Uh, this place called Solstice Press, which was highlighted in the um, in the video. And so locally, you know, great folks. Uh, was, was super excited to work with them. This year we actually using a different printer, um, Hemlock, um, pr Hemlock printers there in, in Canada. And so um, just, you know, we just had to, you know, it was, it was getting real out there. So we had to find different options to, to print it just to make sure that, you know, Umber can keep printing, you know what I'm saying? And so right now our current, this current issue coming out was printed by Hemlock. And so, and, and to make another state about that is that Umber is printed only in black and brown ink. And so most times you have to, you know, when you're printing something like that, you have to, you have to do, do a press check, like I mentioned in the video. And so this press check was on Zoom. So it was a, like, ah, new printer, new technology, I don't know, but it came out great. So, so yeah. Cool. Well, it looks like that's about it for the questions, but I do have a question. So okay. I'm gonna ask one um, selfishly while I'm on here. <laughs> um, um, what is the biggest challenge um, you faced over the course of, you know, getting Umber to reality? I know that's taken on a big project. You probably run into a couple of different obstacles, but if you can identify maybe one or two that, um, that were particularly challenging. Money. That's it, money. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, Umber, the first issue of Umber was funded via Kickstarter. Right, raise the money, they got it printed. Every issue since then has been self-funded. Money out of my own pocket, right? And that to find creative ways of trying to get that money, right? And so, like I said before, my full-time job is doing a design work and some of that design work funds Umber. And so one of the things that was really challenging is, you know, at one point Umber was called Umber Magazine. Right. And so using magazines, you get advertising, you get people to put ads in there and that will supplement the printing costs. Um, Umber is a low, low print run. We print, we print more than a thousand. That's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I can manage, you know, as being a, a self, um, a self publisher. And so for me, money was, was the most, was the thing that was, that was challenging the most. Um, but that my, my drive, yo, listen, <laughs> I just, I, nah, it has to happen. Like I said, no other choice, right? And so um, I was fortunate enough to where this year I was in a, in a better position I was in the year in years before, but Umber still, still came out. And so I'll say the money was the most thing that was the most like challenging. And I think too, is building an audience with a print magazine. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think luckily enough, I found enough people who are, you know, people who are Gen X, you know, from Generation X or folks who just love print media or love things who are, you know, kind of like um, nostalgia. Right. And so um, that was definitely a, a big thing, whatever. But to to promote, you know, what I'm saying a printed magazine or online was a little challenging. And I think another challenge of it was being a one man show. You know what I'm saying? And so I definitely, like I said, I get tons of support from folks. I couldn't have, I, I don't do this alone, but a lot of times it's just me in this studio hunched over my desktop or my, my drafting table working, right? I mean, that's really, that's it. And so the, when you're thinking of purpose-driven design for your personal journey, it's just going to be you. It's just going to be you. That's it. It's really just going to be you, you know? And so, um, so that was, you know, those were the things I would, would challenge. The money aspect, um, you know, trying to to market Umber, on, uh, trying to market a print magazine online, and you know, and just just being a one man show. Sorry, it looks like my internet kicked me off there. Oh, it was just too much for the server. All of here. <laughs> <laughs> you just shut my whole thing down. You literally blew up my whole world over here. <laughs> wow. Well, hopefully, hopefully, sometimes you have to break things down to pull them back up. So, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> 
All right. Well, yeah, I think that does it for um, all of the questions. Um, we've got lots of really great comments and feedback um, from lots of folks in here. I know Grace said, um, she said, I thought it was a stroke of genius to only print in black and brown and ink. And um, she was had been really curious of why you had, to, you know, where you were printing and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, the black, black, I mean, it's the, you know, um, once again, it's furthering that narrative of black and brown, black and brown people. And sometimes printing with two colors is cheaper than doing full color, right? And so, but to convert a four color image into black and white is not, is black and white or brown is not easy. It's not, it's just, <laughs> it's not easy at all. So, but, um, but I love it. You made it happen, you made it happen. All right, looks like we can, oh, we got one last person who's come through. This is probably the last question we can take for the night. Okay. Um, but Steve is asking, uh, who are your design heroes? Ooh, Cheryl Miller. Uh, she is a designer, black woman designer. She's been designing for 50 years now. Um, I got a chance to meet her this year and I saw her work, what she did, I was like, oh, okay, you're, you, 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 you're my mama. <laughs> you're, you're, my, <laughs> you're my design mama. Um, also, also Cheryl Miller, um, Emma Gray, Rudy, and Susanna, um, the couple who created Emma Gray, they've, you know, I became friends with them. They, 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 I mean, they graphically, they inspired how Umber looks, right? Just their approach and, and their aesthetic definitely was inspired by them. Um, uh, so em Emory Douglas, uh, the designer for the Black Panthers was huge influence. Uh, Paul Rand, just the way his, his approach and design, the playfulness of it, the open spaces, like it just really just great. I mean, so those are the first people that I would say to come to mind. Cool, cool. Well, awesome. Yeah, we're just, at, we're pretty much at time here. Okay. Um, so thank you so, so much for taking the time to share your experience with us and um, to let us let, let us all know about Umber. Um, I'm sure yes, most please. of us are going to be out here trying to uh, pre-order uh, the next copy that's coming out here. Yeah, so. actually, yeah, actually, like the pre-order today, because this is the last day for pre-order. So if you go to umbermagazine.net backslash store um, and okay. look for issue four, um, so the, the sales copy, the sales price is, is $30, but for our pre-orders only tonight will be for $25. And um, so if you do it tonight, that'd be super awesome. Umbermagazine.net backslash store. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you heard him. Go out there and get your pre-orders in tonight if you want to get that discount. Yes, um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time and your thank energy you. and you're willing to be candid with us about your process and the challenges you faced. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to answer all these questions from the audience. Um, everyone's sure. really, really excited. And uh, we will share all of your information um, in our Slack channel as well sure. so that people can uh, stay up to date on the latest Umber news. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, have a great rest of your evening. Um, we will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Our next so seven much. months. Bye.